Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 66th episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers as well as the 6th episode of Season 2 titled Bloom of Doom. We'll begin this episode in the Youth Center where everyone is signing up for clubs. Zach has the Hip Hop Keto Club, Trini has the Volleyball Club, and Kim has the Gardening Club. But OMG! No one showed up for Kim's club. Zed sees this, and he sees that Kim is just a tiny bit jealous of her best friend. So he plans to booby trap a cactus plant to make her super jealous with a spell, and that'll split up her and Trini. Bulk and Skull have an unsolved mysteries club, which is pretty fantastic to see them actually caring enough to have a club. Principal Kaplan walks around saying everything is confusing as all hell, and he walks away. And Kim is pissed that no one is showing up, so she talks to a plant. Bulk and Skull make fun of her for not having any club members, and they say that Trini stole all of them. It's surprisingly mean even for Bulk and Skull. On the moon, Goldar pours one out for the homies on a cactus plant that a putty then takes down to the youth center, turns into Fabio, and switches out the plant while Kim laments to Ernie about how Trini is cooler than her suddenly. Kim gets back to her table and she pricks her finger and she's pissed off by a green dusting on her. She goes over to Trini and she attacks her, telling her that she sucks for stealing all the club members. She then goes up to Bulk and Skull with Jason and Tommy nearby and she calls them slime balls while they try to tell her that they're gonna go figure out who the Power Rangers are. I like this brief moment afterward where Skull says she's definitely not a Power Ranger and Bulk says she's in a fight with Trini something, I don't know. It's so rare that we see them acting like real teenagers that it elevates this episode so much with just one line because yeah, Kim may just be in a fight with her best friend. Ernie gives Tommy some fake ass flower to give to Kimberly and he says he's sorry that she's fighting with her best friend. And Kim is a bitch to them. And Jason and Tommy immediately take the stance of, well, f you too then. Again, no one is going, oh no, it's Lord Zed, or even something's off with her. Instead, it's treated as, wow, Kim is in a rare bad mood. I love it. In a field, Trini runs the volleyball club who is immediately practicing after signing up for some reason. Sure would have been nice if Trini had been a tomboy who loved sports or something before this episode, huh? Jason and Tommy show up and they ask Trini what's going on with Kimberly. And Trini basically says that normally she'd be happy for her, but it's not like her to be so jealous. Okay, wow. Tweed Trang has always seemed like the weakest actor on this show, to be honest. But damn, you give her some actual emotions to work with? She shines brighter than everyone else. The facial emotion, the line delivery, everything. Tommy and Jason are going back to the youth center to talk everything out, and Bulk and Skull go by getting their voices before Bulk falls onto the ground. Meanwhile, Kim is pissed off in a garden somewhere because she's so jealous, I guess it's just making her give up on everything. Then Zed decides to create the Bloom of Doom, a monster made from a flower who vows to use her fiery poison pollen to get the rangers. The alarms sound at the command center, and Alpha and Zoran alert the teens right away. Jason, Tommy, and Trini get the call, and they morph to the scene. Then we see that Billy and Zack also get the call, and they morph as well. Finally, Kimberly gets the call, and she acts all fake nice to Zordon. Alpha beams a special weapon to Kimberly to use, which is definitely just a ribbon that she has to wrap around the Bloom of Doom. Then Kimberly gives the most sarcastic, sassy, it's morphin' time ever. I want to watch this episode for forever. The Rangers fight Z putties to the tune of Ron Wasserman's combat, and wow. These in suit American fights have gotten better. Then they go for the Bloom of Doom, who spreads her pollen all over the Rangers, but somehow it just gets on the boys. Billy even claims that he feels like he's going to spontaneously combust. Kimberly pulls out the ribbon weapon and she wraps it around Bloom of Doom, and while she's held in place, Trini tries to get to her, but all of a sudden Bloom of Doom disappears. But apparently it doesn't matter because Kim just jumps up and throws the ribbon again which now the Bloom of Doom uses to her advantage by just tossing Kim around with the Donner. With her kaleidoscope eyeball, she sends Kim to another dimension with her, and the Rangers agree to regroup the command center via the stock footage shots of them. In this dimension, Pollen gets released to attack Kimberly. The Rangers appear in the command center, and Zoran explains why Kimberly has been such a bitch. Did he just watch all this happen without mentioning it to anyone? Whatever, Kim is getting wrapped up by a vine and hit with lightning. Billy helps Alpha with the calculations to free Kim, and he says that Trini just needs to throw her power daggers at a 90 degree trajectory to penetrate the dimension as well as break the spell. Okay, for an episode I've been on board with, this is a crock of shit. 
Trini leaves to go do so. In the dimension, the power daggers come flying in, hitting Bloom of Doom, knocking the two free from the dimension. Trini yells for Kimberly and shows off her penis before reconciling with Kimberly. The two of them work together to attack the Bloom of Doom when Kim calls for the Power Blaster and they destroy her. No Zord battle? This might be my favorite episode so far. At the youth center, Kim has a ton of people around her table and she apologizes for the confusion. And turns out, Principal Kaplan put the wrong location in the school newspaper. That's logical, I guess. Kim apologizes to Trini for being under a spell and Tommy says that it'll take a lot more than Zed to break up their group. Like maybe a peace conference or something. Oh, Bulk and Skull show up and they say they know who the Power Rangers are, but their tape recorder is all messed up so they just leave. That's it, the end. Oh my God, this episode is amazing. Honestly, who knew Tweet Train could really, really act when they actually gave her something to work with? I also like that this episode focuses so heavily on the female characters, while Billy and Zach are barely in this episode at all, and Jason and Tommy are only present a bit more than that. Also, I personally have always been bored by Zord battles since I was a kid, so not having a Zord battle at all makes me happy because it gives us more time to focus on Ranger action. Well done, Power Rangers. How will next episode fare? Find out next time. But until then, may the power protect you.